It's not all about laying track. There's all these other things that you have to do as well. For example, what I want to do now is it's time for the turntable. Uh, I pulled the turntable out. It's a Fleischmann. This is what it looks like. What I haven't shown you is I went ahead and painted all the way around here because some of these had some marks on them. Some were dirty. Uh, I don't mind an occasional scrape like you see in there. Uh, I, I'm okay with some of those markings, but there was red and other colors on it because it had been marked and some black. You can kind of see if you look at the side. Here's the, the color that it was and that's the gray that I painted it, so it's a pretty close match. Then after that, all these rails need to be cleaned, so what I've been doing is taking this, which is a track cleaner, it's the eraser type, slightly abrasive, and going over each and every track, like this, visually inspecting it to make sure there's nothing on the track and at the same time cleaning it. Now before I did this I took 99% rubbing alcohol or 99% isopropyl alcohol and cleaned all of these as well. And these are just the last few that need to be cleaned. When I do testing on the layout and I test each one of these to make sure trains run across them okay, I'll probably have to do a little bit more cleaning, but it, it, this should take care of most of, of the cleaning up front. Although, yep, yeah, looking at that, those are cleaner now. The next thing I have to do is these are all going to conduct uh, current to each of the tracks on the layout. So I need to go through and make sure that when I put the joiners in that they will effectively pick up current. So that means going in at an angle And now that I've gone through this with a couple of different files, filed the inside and the outside edges of the track, I just want to do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to use some 70% isopropyl alcohol so I don't take off any of the paint that I put on. And I'm just going to clean the edges here. My next plan now is to apply track joiners. So we have these which are Peco track joiners because most of our tracks Peco. I know this is Fleischmann. We're now going to see how this works. So we'll go to slip one on. Go to slip one on. And we find that these will not work. The base of the Fleischmann track is wider than the than these joiners, so these joiners won't fit on. Uh, so much for all the extra joiners I bought. Now, if I go to my stack here, I have microengineering joiners. Let's see if they do any better. Uh, traditionally, they're even smaller, so I kind of doubt if they will, but let's give it a try and see just to make sure. Oh, they are indeed smaller, so with neither of those working, let's go to Atlas. See whether they'll 
they're generally larger, so let's see how they fit. And, yep, I can get Atlas on. The only problem with Atlas is I don't like the... Yeah, I'll show you a set of Atlas. don't have very many of these, but... The problem with Atlas is there's a big gap in there, so they have to be trimmed. So we'll go grab my trimmers here, put over on the other table, and put that one on. We'll trim the edge. And then trim it off of there and put the next one on. And we'll trim that off. Trim it off of here. Next one on. Yep. All of that seems to fit and uh, seems to be tight enough for continuity. I'll find out when I lay track. Uh, next job is to finish these all the way around. One of the things that happens when you're doing track work is you need to cut back on the ties and so when you join the track like this you end up with a big space in here where there's no ties and this joint's not bad here if I look over to here that's not too bad the that I've been cutting back are here so what I do is form these to fit under so I'll look here and say how many do I need? I'll take this, which has two. I'll cut off most of this here piece that goes underneath the track. Now, to get it underneath, it won't just slide underneath the way it is, because it's got all of the stuff to hold the track. So what you need to do is cut that off. I'll just go grab my look close device. You know, aka this thing. We'll go down here. Now the other thing that can be a problem is if you have lots of glue in there is the glue will stop that from going in but let's see what this is like okay that's in then I need a device to push it a bit push it down and cork will help there, and then that just goes in like that. You'll never know. Now, the other thing is that should be glued in. And so we'll just eject it here. And there, a little piece of plastic. There's the foam tack glue. That's all we need. Get an applicator of some kind. Thank you, Starbucks. And then just spread this. Um, 
put a little on the underside. Glue aside. Put it where I want. Again, use my pick to push it down a bit as I push it in. Line it up how I want it. Push it down so it'll go under the track. Because I left the spike detail on that side, it'll rest up nice. And there it is. Now when you're doing this, you may have to shave it down a little bit more or file it just a bit because we're going under joiners here as well. So going under joiners makes it a little bit tougher. And now I just have to go around the rest of the layout and figure out where I need to put them. In an area like this. You can see another repair job in here. I added three. As well as over here I added three. So those look a lot better. Uh, what I'm not going to do, however, just to show you, is that the table join here, I probably have room for one right, right at the join, but I'm not going to do it because right now those are nice and level. And if I put one of these in, it'll probably lift it up a little bit. So I'm going to always leave those alone. Here's some before pic. Here's some before pictures. You can see here there's a gap, here there's a gap, gap, gap. As we move through, gap, gap, bigger gap, uh, not much of a gap. That looks pretty good there. Uh, gap, gap, gap. Uh, gap on that, that looks pretty good. As I come into here, might want one in there as well. So with all these turnouts, there's gaps involved. Again, when I go back to here, I don't care too much other than I can see I can probably put some in there as well. Uh, definitely one in there might put one in there as well but I'm not doing anything back there so I come around here I don't know and then I haven't done that so we'll see now let's look at the after picture the after picture you can see there's some in there uh, I didn't put one there but I put one in there there's some in there and I had to cut ties in order to do it so oh, I think right there is where I put those in and uh, should be one there now where all these turnouts are some went in here uh, more in here you see how I have to cut the ends off to get those to fit another there and as we go through here you can see where ties have been inserted but you have to look pretty close to tell where this has happened. So you can see there, another one went in there, and there, along that area, along that area. So there's a number of areas where we went ahead and installed additional ties. And I already showed you that. And if we go over to the removable section you can see there's a tie there tie there tie there and I think that's the only ones that I had to install so a little bit of epoxy coming through there but we'll just file that down and paint it and then we go back over to here you can see there's, well, I, I don't know if I installed one there or not, but it, if it needed it, I did it. So, that's what it looks like after you do all that work. Now there's no gaps along there, and everything's fitting well.